didn't go off. I slept about 11 hours. Still feel tired. We have a little like a uh, sleep IQ or something. Something like that. Tells you how good you sleep. I slept 45 out of 100, although I slept 11 hours. Heavy squats. And we try to mix in some block pulls for reps. Bench for reps. Went on a little binger yesterday. Ate a whole bag of uh, pita chips. What do, what do I watch? I've, I'm started Breaking Bad. Episode five. Pita chips. Breaking Bad. Alien documentary. They found a probe, an alien probe, that emits some type of frequency. They analyze the metal. But just how could ancient man have built such colossal structures? Were the stones really moved by beings with superhuman strength? Or might the builders have had access to an advanced, perhaps alien technology? Maybe they're here at us. Maybe I have one. I've just never seen bench or anyone bench 315 like that before. I've been. I'm sure Spoto does. You know? uh, yeah, I, I, Spoto does that with 405. I think Spoto, don't quote me, but it's like 405 for 40 reps. It's like it's like 500 for 20 reps. That's so stupid. Yeah, I've been around some freak of freakies. Funny guys that kind of bench. Mid 500s, I'll move 315 around that, but uh, it's like guys that bench 400 move 225 around like that. What's your opinion on knees moving forward while squatting? What is too far forward? Going off of the last question too. So I guess to go to an extreme, too far forward would basically only be is if your heels come off the ground. If your heels come off the ground, you're too far forward. I guess a little bit more realistic is hypothetically speaking, if your knees are only moving forward and you're not opening up space for your hips, you'll technically never reach depth and depth is the goal. Enter example one. Yeah, I get it from the side. Yeah, so we're not at depth. We want hip below our knee. Obviously my calf mobility stopped there, but hypothetically, if you had greater range in your calf and ankle than I do, you're never gonna hit depth that way. So, come back in here, friends. Let's get intimate. So, um, I guess referring back to the last question, we want that bar over our midfoot at all times. We want to get our hip below our knee. Um, and if you get those two things right, those are kind of the end result I know, but if you get those two things right, your knees and hips are probably moving in the right place. Um, some people, your knees may have to go in front of your toe. I think for most people, they don't. Uh, if you have really long femurs, kind of thigh bone, you'll just go with a slightly wider stance and knees will go forward and out. If you're really stumpy, uh, thigh bone, femur, then you can go a narrower stance, you can still hit depth, but knees forward out, hips back just slightly. Uh, is the recipe for the majority. Uh, it's hard to say without looking at you. If you get extreme knee pain, uh, you may need a more vertical knee, or excuse me, a more vertical shin when you squat um, to get a little bit of pressure off there, or maybe you're not warming up correctly, or maybe you're programming uh, too much volume. There's a lot of things in play when it comes to it. That's kind of where I talk about programming or coaching in general. There's no, just an answer. Uh, it's kind of troubleshooting along the way, and that's the truth with anything. That's the truth with technology, that's the truth with coaching basketball, and it's also the truth with strength training. Uh, there's some things that could be causing that, and then you troubleshoot along the way. Or there's some things that may break your plateau, or some things that may get you a 700 pound deadlift. It's just about figuring out which ones uh, work best along the way, and I have a scope or pockets of what works best, 
And it's just kind of using what tools when. Juggling. Last set. What you got? This guy says, I've filled my squat countless times and I can't figure out how to fix it. My upper back stays tight, my core stays tight, my knees track well, and don't cave. So everything looks good until I look at the bar path and notice that the bar gets further in front of my toes, the further I descend, and his knees are always killing him because of this. So you think your knees are tracking right. You think you're staying tight with your upper back and your core, but bar path is the main issue. A um, couple things we can do. <clears throat> One, I'd have to see it to make a for sure call. Uh, bar position may play a role right now. If you have a higher bar position and you're getting gradually more torso lean as you're squatting, that could be kind of what it sounds like right now. It's hard to say again because I can't see it. With the information given, it's going to be hard to answer. But So if you have the bar really high up on your traps um, and you're getting gradually worse torso lean as you squat, obviously bar path is going to look like this. Uh, like a more than sign or greater than sign. That's not optimal. What we're going to need to do if the bar is high is you're going to have to really force your knees forward and out and allow your hips to go straight down with your torso quite upright. Um, if you have your bar a little bit lower or it can even get it lower than where you are right now, uh, we can start to have a torso lean and start to lead with our hips a little bit more. So still knees forward and out, but we can lead with our hips going back just slightly. And so then this bar will stay in that straight line over our midfoot. Basically what we're always trying to do is keep that bar over our midfoot, regardless of where the bar is on our back and regardless of how you're built. We wanna get our hip lower than our knees and we want to keep that bar over our midfoot. Something that may fix it without me seeing it is tempo squats. So, so tempo squat, because it becomes more difficult time under tension, use maybe anywhere from 40 to perhaps even 55, 60% of your one arm max, sets of you know four to maybe even 10. And what we're gonna try to do is descend with five seconds, pause for one and come back up for five seconds. This will allow you to find balance uh, and proper positioning to get an optimal bar path because an optimal bar path allows us to lift the most amount of weight most efficiently. And so if you're not being efficient, it's going to, your body's gonna to wanna to find what's easier, right? Your body wants to do what's easier. So some tempo squats, mess around maybe with bar position. Um, otherwise it's kind of hard to say without seeing it, but those are the two things that I would address first if I was you. Was that? I hope I'm not getting sick. I hope I'm not sick. I just felt like the worst tickle. I think I'm more of a winner guy. I think I look for any excuse to sit on my couch and chill because that's what I like to do. But when it comes to working out, it's probably like 65 degrees out right now. It's pretty warm for even. Look, California's not all sunshine and fucking rainbows, ladies and gentlemen. We're in Northern California. It's way different than San Diego or Malibu or whatever the hell you're thinking about. But even for us, 60 degrees right now is pretty damn hot. But I do like working out in this weather. I'll do five here, see how it feels. Then maybe 455, bench. I don't want to do cardio, but probably have to.
how does it look? Hey, rate this below, one to 10. And rate it for like a normal human, not like an Instagram human. We were talking off camera, I don't know how to take fucking, oh, how's that? Do I do, I don't know how to take things so I look good, which is a benefit in the long run, because then I look better when you meet me, in the real life. Oh, turn? Turn like that way? Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Right there. Right there. Go get your camera. We're taking a <laughs> thumbnail. Close it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to learn how to take Instagram pictures. Hopefully, you appreciated the squat bench dead. Full power lifting workout. That's what I'm doing on these Saturdays. Heavier squat, rep deadlift, rep bench. Appreciate you. Comment below how you think this bicep looks. Catch you in the next video, my friends. Later.